Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today we're going to talk about Wall Street running scared. We're going to talk about the GameStop apocalypse. We are seeing one of the greatest reverse transfers of wealth in all of human history right now on Wall Street. What does it all mean for you, the prepper, the survivalist? We're also going to talk about the stock market, which I believe is crashing in slow motion. I believe that there is a silent, well, not so silent if you're on Main Street, recession right now, which is being veiled by many factors so you got to stick with me to the end of this video because we're going to talk about all this we're going to start right now let's get to it So what's going on right now is you have this war between the retail investors and the big uh, hedge fund managers on Wall Street. For those of you who don't know the stock market lingo, it's important that you understand how these things work and it's important that you might want to look into getting into investing yourself because now it's very easy to do. You know, you don't need uh, high amounts, you can buy fractional shares and all that stuff. But before you even think about embarking on that, make sure you are doing copious amounts of research search and you are cross-referencing information from a variety of different sources before you make any plays. It's important because this whole retail investing revolution is in its renaissance right now. And I believe that there's going to be some big regulation coming down the pike because the elites are running scared. Of course, they're trying to buddy up to the administration to start to impose some regulation on these pesky little Reddit trolls, as they call them, who are you know driving the price of these stocks up and basically bankrupting these hedge funds. So we're going to talk about a little bit about how that works. All right. So what you have is you have this website called Reddit. Okay. On Reddit, there's these what they call subreddits, uh, forums. Okay, one of them is called Wall Street Bets. I think it has about 290,000 people in it right now, and these 290,000 people and probably a lot more have collectively put their minds and their money together to try to force short squeezes on certain stocks. So you might be asking. What the hell is a short squeeze? Without going into great detail, because I'm not the best at explaining economics in a way which is very simple, all you need to know is that these big hedge fund managers on Wall Street like to short stocks that they think are going to go down. So when you short a stock, you're making a bet that the, the price of the stock is gonna go down. And it involves borrowing lots of shares and selling them before you buy them and sort of weird things like that that I don't wanna get into. All you need to know is that the big guys, the, the big fat cats, they're betting on this stock to go down, this GameStop stock, as it probably should, because it kind of reminds me where Blockbuster was at, you know, back in 2004. They're a retail outlet that sells video games, okay? And most, if you don't know, most video games are uh, going online now. You just download them. You don't even need to be in a store at all. And we all know where retail has gone in the last year. So needless to say, they did their research, and rightly so, to think that, GameStop is probably going to crash, okay? Well, the retail investors caught wind that this was one of the most heavily shorted stocks, and basically they started buying up the stock. So Wall Street is betting that the stock is going to decline. The retail investor catches wind of this. They're really pissed off at, at Wall Street for all the things and all the money they've stolen from us and the variety of uh, transfer mechanisms that they have over the years. And they said, you know what? We're going to fight back this time. They collectively said, let's go and buy the hell out of game stock stock, pumping the stock price up even further, forcing these shorts out of their positions because they only have a limited period of time and wiggle room for how they can do this, this trade that they do. So that means that they have to buy back shares in order to cover their positions. Okay. And when they do that, that's gonna drive the price up even more. They call that a short squeeze. And when you have thousands of people from one of the most heavily shorted stocks right now doing that at the same time, that makes the stock go parabolic, which is what it did. If you would have bought into this stock back last year, you would have made a 100X gain. I think it closed out at 350 today. Some people say it still has room to climb. I would absolutely, uh, I'm not gonna say don't do, you know get in and, and and join the party because I personally you know I bought a few shares not because I planned on making any money whatsoever. In fact, if I lose the shares, I'm not even really concerned. It's more uh, just on principle, okay? Because I'm gonna tell you how I feel about shorting stocks. I think it it's if there ever was an unethical trade it has to revolve around shorting. Now, call options are kind of the reverse of that. It's fighting fire with fire. You know, personally, I, I don't do that either. But both of these only 
prosper if somebody else loses severely, okay? The whole uh, mechanism for making money by shorting a stock, I think is inherently evil because you're basically hoping that someone else goes bankrupt or someone else loses a lot of money so you can make a lot of money. I don't think it should be illegal. I think people should have the freedom to choose whether or not they get involved with this kind of play. But personally, I don't think it's that ethical. That's just my opinion. So I have absolutely no remorse for somebody who goes completely bankrupt because they're playing with this type of fire. This is going to change things. I don't know how it's gonna change things, and I don't know why it's taken this long for it to happen, but maybe it's because GameSpot was so uh, heavily shorted and this opportunity finally came about, but things are about to change in terms of how trades occur. And because everybody now has an app on their phone that they can trade on, this has really brought in a new era of the retail investor. And it's really a Wild West type situation right now with the Robin Hood trading. And you guys remember the whole Hertz fiasco uh, last year where you, know, you have a company going bankrupt, but people are just trading in it, you know, going crazy, playing with the shorts and all that stuff. So this isn't the first time this has happened on a collective level, but this is the most notable one because people are losing billions and billions of dollars. And it's a transfer of wealth because the people who are losing it, remember, have had it now gained by the retail investor. So it's interesting to see how that's gonna pan out. I think that the, the government's gonna probably step in if this continues, but maybe it's just gonna discourage people from shorting stocks again. But they might come in now and say, oh, this is all the more reason why we have to regulate social media, right? You remember that, those roundtable discussions with Jack Dorsey, Zuckerberg, and uh, Bezos, and all those guys when they're getting grilled by Congress? Remember those talks, you know, before all the stuff happened last year? Funny that they're not happening anymore, isn't it? Hmm. Wonder why. Maybe somebody did somebody a favor. Who knows? Anyways, something is going to come of this. This is not going to be the end because this is the people now saying that, look, we have a way to fight back. You guys benefited from all the stimulus spending. You know, you're, you're the guys who get bailed out all the time. And, you know, the government and the Fed are, are feeding the, the wealthy in a variety of different ways. And they make you wait six months to get a little pittance in the mail. And so this is the retail investor's way of taking just a little bit back, a very, very, very small proportion of what has been taken. Let's be honest, because we're also gonna talk about inflation. Now, part two of this video, stock market, inflation. The stock market is crashing. If the stock market is not keeping pace with inflation, then you're in a perpetual recession, essentially. So what does that mean? Right now, the USA, how much money did they print last year? It was in the trillions of dollars. I'm not sure if it was you know, between three to four trillion or something like that. The total money supply of US dollars in the earth at any given time is around $80 trillion. You have four trillion on the books in the past year alone. You have, what, what are we now, 30 trillion in debt, and every country is doing the exact same thing. So you've noticed that the stock market since the March crash has seemingly gone straight up. Well, this is what you need to understand about inflation. While we are starting to see the consumer price index rise uh, marginally, not by a huge amount yet, but this is the deception though. All of the inflation right now is trapped in the stock market, which trades at record levels right now. So what do I mean by that? Well, the market cap of the, the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, these numbers that are going up are reflective of the overall market cap of all the companies within these indexes, okay? So the higher the value of the companies, the higher the NASDAQ goes, the higher the Dow Jones goes. So we've seen that the overall valuation in US dollars of these companies has been going sky high since March of last year. Well, does that mean that everything is going great and everybody's making money? Because if the markets are sky high, then there should be prosperity everywhere. But what do we see on the ground? You know, We see a lot of people who are going into insurmountable amounts of debt, people who can't pay off their student loans, people who can't pay their mortgages, many people who've lost their jobs. We see small businesses folding. We see a variety of catastrophe on Main Street all around us. So why then does Wall Street not reflect Main Street, because we're told that Wall Street lives in the future, and that it does. 
But that's the problem. Because if Wall Street, if the NASDAQ, if the Dow Jones, if there was a major sell-off today and people tried to move that money that they took from the stock market that's just been sitting there, dormant, it's like a volcano uh, building under the surface, okay? Eventually, it's going to erupt. It has to erupt. All of that money that's been printed, all of that stimulus has been pumped into the market. And not a lot of people are spending right now. That money hasn't made its way into the commodities yet, into the food price yet, because not everybody is going out and, you know, rushing out and buying TVs and smartphones and all this stuff in the same amounts that they would normally be if it was in actual bull market. So all that money is just staying in the stock market right now. And then you got a lot of retail investors who got nothing better to do but put all their money that they get from stimulus or whatever extra money they get into the markets. So the money is not being spent on hard assets. But once that bubble pops, okay, and people start running from the doors, they're going to take this cash because they're going to realize that that's when the inflation is going to kick in because that's when the supply is not going to be able to meet the demand. And that's when you're going to see massive price hikes in various places. You know, inflation isn't just about, you know, uh, the cost of uh, Apple going up 50%. You know, it's also about housing prices, uh, all the other aspects of, of costs of living. But let's talk about the stock market crashing upwards. Now, I've been talking about this for a long time, but there's a guy who explains it much better. I just came across his video last night, really explains it well. But I'm gonna give you my own example and I'll post a link to his video in the description below. But look at it this way, okay? Let's say you are on an island and there's 10 people on your island and there's 10 coconuts to go around. So people are using these coconuts as a means of a monetary exchange. So, you know, they're trading the coconuts for, for whatever, for a, a tree, a fish, or whatever the case might be, all right? Now, people are getting tired of lugging around these coconuts. So they say to themselves, look, we're going to come together. Instead of trading coconuts, we are going to use these very rare shiny rocks on the ground over here. And we're going to call it money. And we're going to have 10 of them. One is equivalent to one coconut okay and so this goes on for some time and it works out okay then a year goes by and they're gonna have an election and the guy in charge the one of ten says you know what I'm gonna give everybody an extra rock this year just before this election okay and so he gives everybody an extra rock now so long as nobody spends that rock so long as they put it under their pillow and never ever use it, never ever put it in circulation, it won't disrupt the supply and demand. Because remember, every one of the 10 people have a coconut, remember that. Now, if you take your extra rock and you go buy somebody else's coconut and he sells it to you, you might get that first one for a dollar if you're the first to do it. If you're the first out the door to liquidate your stocks and try to put that into hard assets, you're the lucky one because you're gonna get that coconut the cheapest it's ever gonna be. Because from here on in, the price of coconuts is going to start to go up. The next guy who goes to try to buy a coconut, well now they're gonna be a bit more scarce. So maybe he has to pay 1.5 rocks or two rocks for a coconut because obviously they can't be broken up in this example. So the next guy, he has to pay maybe three or four rocks. Well, where's he gonna get these rocks from? Well, he's gotta go do something for the rocks, right? So. The last guy, it's musical chairs. Whoever you know has the, the last remaining coconut is going to be able to charge whatever he wants for it. So what this means right now in a nutshell is that all of these sky high stock market valuations that you're seeing, you know, you're, you're seeing a company's trade at ratios, which are totally unjustified. I think tells us trading at like 2000 price to earnings ratio when typical is somewhere between 10 and 20. They're out of this world. And eventually you would think eventually this has to come crashing down. Now, if it doesn't, the only reason why the whole system is not collapsing is because nobody's running for the doors right now. But I'm telling you guys, as soon as the shift hits the fan and people start running for the doors and going and trying to put that money in hard assets, the price of that stuff is going to skyrocket. I don't know how much. I don't think it's going to be necessarily hyperinflation, but you know, I'm not an economist. I don't know if, if it's going to be like a domino effect, like that's going to start the chain reaction that's going to lead to hyperinflation. All I know is that if you're in cash right now, 
you're in trouble because the currency is not what it used to be. The inflation right now is tucked away. It's tucked under the rug, okay? But you can only keep tucking it under the rug for so long. Eventually, that money, people are gonna start selling those stocks. All it's gonna take is a major market correction, okay? So long as the market correction isn't that severe, then it might not lead to a lot of inflation. But the inflation is kind of being stored. It's like a carbon capture, you know? It, it's there, you know, so long as it doesn't get released, we're not screwed, right? But probably not the best example to use, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Cash is trash and you need to find a place to put your money that isn't in cash. Now, do you put it in the stock market? Because all these people who think that they're making these big gains in the markets right now, you really got to look at the numbers. What are gains if you can't buy as much? I know I'm starting to sound like Peter Schiff right now. Now, here's the thing with this. This means that the stock market can be actually crashing, that we can be in a recession, but it can be going upwards. I'm going to post a link, really explains it really well and he provides historical examples and stuff like that. I'm not really that prepared today, guys, but I wanted to uh, strike while the iron was hot on this one because this is what it's on everybody's minds. But if that were to happen, if there was some sort of runaway effect and all of these other countries that are holding dollars, they start to liquidate. That's when you start to see military Air Force carriers moving around a little bit more around the earth, okay? There's 80 trillion reasons why they want to keep the US dollar propped up. So if you see that NASDAQ and that Dow Jones continue to go up and up and up and up and it starts to really go up sky high, you know, you know that the shift has hit the fan already and you got to find a way to get yourself into some hard assets. I don't care if it's gold, precious metals, you might even want to look at cryptocurrency. Yeah, put some in stocks, but just have your finger over the button because you can never time it. You know, you got to do your research and all things considering, you know, it may be the case that the bubble just keeps inflating, that they somehow are able to keep kicking the can down the road. But I'm telling you, I think something really interesting is going to happen this year. And the way that the military industrial complex is weaved into all this, well, I guess that's another video all unto itself and then you got the crypto thing and now you got the retail investor wars and that's just the beginning i truly think that that is just the beginning of the social media and uh, fintech integration where you're going to have uh, collectives of people trying to move the market in the same way that these big he big hedge funds always do so it's going to be interesting anyways i just want to provide you guys with my take on that the next video it's going to be a prepping video don't worry, but I had to get that out there. So let me know what you think in the comments. What are you doing with your cash right now? Are you just uh, taking it out to the trash? And by that, I mean just leaving it sit in a drawer somewhere. Or are you planning on doing something with it? And if you don't have cash, what are your goals right now? Are you looking for employment? Are you trying to start a small business? Are you trying to start a website? Are you trying to start a YouTube channel? What are you doing in order to keep yourself solvent? throughout these precarious times. I'm interested to know. Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the video. Canadian Prepper out.